So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at just using CorelDRAW to create a rhinestone pattern. And it's actually very easy to do. Um, we do need to use our Blend Docker here in CorelDRAW. So if you don't have your Blend Docker open, come to the Window menu, choose Dockers, and choose that Blend Docker. So we're going to go ahead and add stones to our letter G here, and I'll show you how that works. So first thing we need to do is create a circle. If we grab our ellipse tool here in CorelDRAW and simply draw a circle, whatever size we want, if we hold down our control key, that will constrain that circle to a perfect circle rather than ellipse. Now, once we have our perfect circle, we need to have it uh, a specific size for our rhinestone. Now, I cut my templates at 3.2, and notice that right now it's in inches. I need to hit MM for millimeters, and that will change the size of that circle to be 3.2 millimeters. The other thing I should point out is when we are changing the size of our circle, make sure this little lock is locked so that when we change the width, uh, the height uh, changes with it. So now we have a perfect circle. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select that circle with my mouse, left click and drag, and then right click. And what that does is creates a duplicate circle. Now from there, I need to create what we call a blend. So over here in our blend docker, we can specify the number of steps. So let's say for this example, I want to use 10. And we we'll go ahead and hit apply. And you can see what happens is I get 10 steps in between the start and end, which gives me 12. Now, what do I do with this? Well, first of all, I'm going to make a duplicate, a duplicate, a duplicate. And the way I'm doing that is left click, drag, right click, left click, drag, right click, left click, drag, right click, right? Now, when I have one of these blends selected, I have a path here for my letter G. I'm going to come up here, arrange, uh, break, curve apart. So I have this top loop, I have this piece, and then I have the bottom piece. Okay, so that's what we're going to be adding stones to. So to add these stones to this top loop, over here in our blend docker, with that blend selected, there's this button right here. Click on that button and choose new path and click on that loop. And then once I've selected my loop, there's two more functions. Blend along full path and rotate all objects, which in this case we don't need to use the rotate function. But when I hit apply, look what happens. Those stones are then applied to my path. Now right now the spacing is a little bit more than I would like, right? So what we can do is we can just up the number of stones or steps to 18, hit apply. Mm, that's better, but let's keep going. And hit apply again. And now we're getting right about where we need it. The more you do it, the more you're going to say, uh-huh, I, I know this line is this big. You know what? I'm going to need 40 stones for that. So what we're going to do is we can take this right here and we could just say, hey, give me 40 and hit apply. And now we have 40 stones in there. And then when I choose the new path function, blend along full path, apply, boom. Look how many stones we have. So we're, we weren't too far off. We went a little, a little crazy. So let's back that off a little bit. Let's do 33 stones. Not bad. Down a couple more. Maybe one or two more. And now that spacing is roughly the same spacing as what we had on top. So then we have this last little hunk here. So again, we're going to select our blend, new path, click on the path, blend along full path, apply. And I'm going to say we need 24 stones and a couple more. And there we have it. Now we do need to finesse things a little bit. So we'll grab our shape tool here and we're just going to modify our paths a little bit. So now we've got that one set about where we need it to. We need to modify this one a little bit. That's about right. I'm going to pull this one up just a pinch. Let me back that off just a little bit. We want to get this spacing just about right between all of these. Um, and, you know, when we, when we move these paths around, we can also uh, just lower it by one stone. Say that we lower the stone, increase our spacing between our stones a little bit. Maybe that's pretty good. Um, so that's good. Here... Uh, where these these two meet um, we'd probably want to uh, make a small adjustment there so we can click on that and right here I'm just going to choose the break apart and come up here uh, and then we can actually manipulate uh, these paths uh, independently that way uh, we can 
uh, make a small adjustment there. And then we've got another situation here where we need to do something kind of similar, but we'll break apart. And then we can manipulate these uh, two paths. Whoops, let's undo that. Move this one, uh, maybe somewhere like that. Bump this one up. There we go. See? So it doesn't really take a lot. Now, to get these stones off the path, we just select that blend, and we can right-click and choose Break Blend Apart. And when we do that, then we can come in here and add the extra stone we need to at the top. We can come down here, and we see a little bit of adjustment that was made here. So let's fix that. Let's bring that back up, and let's position that like so and then we'll go ahead and break this apart and we'll break this one apart as well then we can take this stone and we can just keep going across like so get rid of this and get rid of the path because we don't need that anymore and get rid of this path as well and then we go back to the enhance mode here um, and then we can select all these stones Give them a color, right click, and you can see how nice we are able to do that just using that one basic uh, blend function uh, here inside CorelDRAW. Now, obviously, using a macro is going to make the process a lot quicker, but you can definitely get the job done simply using CorelDRAW as well. Thanks for watching.